His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received a secure palace, senior royal family members, representatives council speaker, Shura council chairman, senior officials and a number of citizens and top achievers to greet His Majesty. His Majesty welcomed the attendees in these blessed meetings, which are an authentic Arab custom that the people of Bahrain have been practicing for many decades and they are keen to preserve for its great role in strengthening the solidarity among them. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة أيها السيدات والسادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته يشرفنا أن نرحب بكم أجمل ترحيب في هذا اللقاء الطيب خير ما نبدأ به the meeting began with the recitations of verses from the Holy Quran. قل لعبادي الذين آمنوا يقيموا الصلاة وينفقوا مما رزقناهم سرا وعلانية من قبل أن يأتي 
يأتي يوم من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلال من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلال الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم وسخر لكم الفلك لتجري في البحر بأمره وسخر لكم الأنهار وسخر لكم الشمس والقمر دائبين وسخر لكم الليل والنهار وآتاكم من كل ما سألتموه وإن تعدوا نعمة الله لا تحصوها إن الإنسان لظلوم كفار صدق الله العظيم يتفضل سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه His Majesty the King then delivered the following speech بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نرحب بكم أجمل ترحيب ويسعدنا أن نلتقي بكم وبالمسؤولين من أصحاب الإنجازات الوطنية الرفيعة وأنه لمن دواعي الاعتزاز أن نخصص لقائنا هذا للإشادة بالنتائج المثمرة والمتميزة لبرنامج العقوبات البديلة الذي يحظى بإشراف مهني يمتاز بدقة التنفيذ والمرونة في التطوير لوزارة الداخلية وكوادرها المخلصين وفي ضوء ما أنجزه البرنامج فنحن فخورون بكونه الأول من نوعه على مستوى المنطقة حيث بادرت مملكة البحرين بمؤسساتها الدستورية والتنفيذية وفي سياق حرصها المستمر لتطوير المنظومة الجنائية بأن يكون لها تجربتها الخاصة في هذا المجال وبتشريعات وسياسات تعتمد نهج العدالة الإصلاحية المعززة للحقوق الإنسانية ونشكر بهذه المناسبة معالي الشيخ راشد بن عبد الله الخليفة وزير الداخلية والحضور من القائمين على هذا المشروع النوعي الذي يعملون بكل جهدهم للوصول به إلى هذا المستوى المتقدم من التطبيق وبجاهزية تصل بصيتها إلى العالمية ونهنئهم كذلك على نجاحها المشهود في ترجمة الأثر الإنساني والاجتماعي المرجو من البرنامج والمتمثل في منح المستفيدين منه أملا جديدا لاستعادة ذاتهم وللاندماج في مجتمعهم وللحفاظ على استقرار أسرهم وهذا أمر نحرص عليه 
ونوجه لتطوير مجالاته وتنويع فرص الاستفادة منه بوركت جهودكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Then, the Director General of the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing, Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and members of the Directorate greeted His Majesty, where His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation for the efforts in establishing and implementing this law in Bahrain, in addition to the establishment of open prisons. His Majesty wished them further success. ساهم في تأسيس وتنفيذ القانون في مملكة البحرين بالإضافة إلى إنشاء السجون المفتوحة حيث يعتبر التطبيق الأول من نوعه في المنطقة الرائد جاسم جبر الدوسري النقيب راشد وليد الدوسري النقيب أحمد خالد المنصور النقيب علي خالد العيمي النقيب عبد الله خالد الكعبي النقيب خالد ابراهيم المطوع النقيب ناصر سلطان الرميحي النقيب عبد العزيز عبد الله الجيران النقيب خليفه احمد الفضاله النقيب عيسى موسى الدوسري الملازم أول جاسم علي المناعي الملازم أول محمد خليفة الكعبي الملازم أول عبد الله راشد آل بن علي الملازم أول مريم محمد التميمي ملازم أول عائشة أحمد القعود الملازم أول عبد الله عيسى الحمادي ملازم أول خالد علي عيد ملازم أول محمد راشد الحماد ملازم أول سارة ناصر الجنيد ملازم أول مشاعل عبد الله عبد الرحيم ملازم أول محمد خليل العاثم صاحب الجلالة أيها الحضور الكريم يلقي معالي الفريق أول ركن الشيخ راشد بن عبد الله الخليفة وزير الداخلية هذه الكلمة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبيه الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظكم الله ورعاكم أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة الحضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إنه ليوم مبارك في حضرة مقامكم السامي سيدي وإني أتشرف بإسمي وبالأصالة عن كافة منتسبي وزارة الداخلية بأن أرفع خالص الولاء والامتنان إلى جلالتكم أيدكم الله على اللفتة الملكية الكريمة لتفضلكم باستقبال نخبة من أبنائكم وبناتكم من مرتب الإدارة العامة لتنفيذ الأحكام والعقوبات البديلة الذين هم في واقع الأمر ينضمون إلى ركب شباب البحرين المتألق بإخلاصه وولائه وصدق انتماء سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة 
إذا أردنا أن نعود بالأمر إلى أصل فإن قانون العقوبات والتدابير البديلة قد انبثق من فكر جلالتكم وتوجيهاتكم السامية التي أكدت على أن شباب الوطن لا يكون مكانهم السجن بل يجب أن يحتضنهم الأهل والمجتمع والوطن وأن تهيئ لهم فرص التعليم والمشاركة الفاعلة في تطوير ونهضة بناء الوطن وعلى ضوء ذلك فقد تم تكليف هذه الإدارة الفتية بمسؤولية وضع وتنفيذ البرامج المطلوبة لتفعيل القانون بالتنسيق مع المؤسسات والأجهزة المعنية في الدولة وأخص بالذكر النيابة العامة التي تمثل حلقة الوصل بين الشرطة والجهاز القضائي وقد عملت الإدارة العامة لتنفيذ الأحكام والعقوبات البديلة بمنهجية مهنية علمية وواقعية ولله الحمد جاءت النتائج مميزة ومثمرة وفق المقاييس الدولية سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الحضور الكرام في هذه السنة المباركة التي نحتفل فيها بمرور 25 عاماً على تولي جلالتكم مقاليد الحكم يشرفني التنويه بأن من يتم تكريمهم اليوم إنما هم في الواقع غرس مشروعكم الإصلاحي الوطني الذي حظى برعايتكم وجل عنايتكم وحمايتكم الدائمة إنهم يا سيدي شباب النهضة والإصلاح الوطني الشامخ وإنجاز لي التعبير في هذا المقام بالقول إنهم شباب حمد وإن البحرين اليوم ولله الحمد والشكر تجنيها معكم يا سيدي عطاء وعزة وكرامة ليبقى الوطن بقيادته وشعبه مهابا مصان ومما لا شك فيه فإن هذه البرامج الإنسانية تهدف إلى لم شمل الأسرة ومنح الفرصة لإصلاح المستفيدين وتعزيز الثقة الوطنية وإنها تعبيرا واضحا عن مدى اهتمام الدولة بأبنائها في جميع الظروف ويطيب لي هنا أن أشيد بما نلقاه من متابعة واهتمام من لدن صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد الخليفة ولي عهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حيث تم البدء في تطبيق البرنامج فعليا في عام 2018 والذي ساهم منذ تطبيقه حتى الآن بإعادة تأهيل وإدماج 7458 مستفيد مما يؤكد النجاح المميز لمنهجية العمل هي نسبة الالتزام بين المستفيدين والتي بلغت 97.5 وهذه يا سيدي تعد من أعلى النسب العالمية إن لم تكن هي الأعلى سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة إن مملكة البحرين بقيادتكم الحكيمة تواصل السير نحو تعزيز القيم الإنسانية والمبادئ السامية في نظام العدالة حيث أن قانون العقوبات البديلة يمثل خطوة رائدة ونقلة نوعية في المنظومة الإصلاحية تعكس حرص مملكة البحرين على تعزيز الاندماج الاجتماعي والالتزام بتطبيق مبادئ حقوق الإنسان وقد لاقى تطبيق برنامجية العقوبات البديلة والسجون المفتوحة إشادة على المستوى الإقليمي والدولي وحصلت تلك البرامج على جائزة صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير نايف بن عبد العزيز للأمن العربي وعلى شهادة الاعتماد الدولية من الجمعية الإصلاحية الأمريكية كأول جهة من خارج الولايات المتحدة وفي الختام فإني أتقدم إلى جلالتكم من أعماقنا الوطنية بخالص التقدير والولاء سائلا المولى عز وجل أن يحفظكم ويرعاكم سندا وذخرا لنهضة الوطن ومجده وأن يحفظ ولي عهدكم الأمين وأنجالكم الكرام وأن يديم على البحرين عزتها 
ومنعتها ومجدها الوطني في ظل عهدكم الزاهر باذن الله ودمتم سالمين سيدي والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته. At the end of the meeting, His Majesty the King thanked the attendees for their efforts and wished success for the ISF Gymnasiad, hosted by the Kingdom for the first time. His Majesty noted that Bahrain will host more than 5,000 participants, including players, coaches and administrative staff from more than 70 countries, which is added to Bahrain's record of achievements. For their part, the attendees expressed gratitude to His Majesty for meeting them and his keenness to consolidate the authentic social values that characterise Bahraini society throughout its history. They expressed loyalty and pride to His Majesty, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty with abundant health and happiness and grant the Kingdom further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a secure palace, the Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council, the President of the Constitutional Court, the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf, and a number of ju judges. When the judges took the legal oath before His Majesty on the occasion of the issuance of the Royal Decree, appointing them as judges in the Constitutional Court, the Court of Cassation, and the High Civil Court of Appeal. His Majesty affirmed his keenness to consolidate the independence of the judiciary, support the judiciary authority and provide qualified cadres for it based on the important role it plays in preserving rights and enhancing the security and stability of society. Expressing His Majesty's pride in the long history of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the field of the judiciary and the pioneering achievements it has made in this regard. His Majesty the King congratulated them and wished them success in carrying out their new national responsibilities and tasks to enforce and consolidate the principles of truth, justice and the rule of law. His Majesty the King expressed pride in Bahrain's judges who bear the responsibility of preserving the rights of citizens and residents and ensuring the achievement of the principles of justice and the rule of law, noting the importance of the noble message of the judiciary and its pivotal role in the development and stability of society. A royal interest in meeting people with high national achievements and honouring them for their continuous efforts for the advancement of the Kingdom of Bahrain in all national and international forums represents the cornerstone of building a cohesive society rooted in its national identity. More in this report. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's interest in honouring innovators and national achievers and his continued support for the alternative sentencing programme represents an insightful vision for building a prosperous society based on appreciation and reform. This royal support is the cornerstone of building a cohesive society fostering creativity and innovation and ensuring second chances and reintegration into society. In the beginning, I'd like to thank His Majesty the King this honor reflects His Majesty's keenness on reform program, alternative sentencing and open prisons. We saw the results and the achievements that this project achieved on the international level. This is a great step and the project is exceptional, achieving international achievements. The Kingdom of Bahrain is an established model for human rights during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. This is through projects and initiatives that were launched through the alternative sanctions and open prisons programs. Workers in the alternative sentencing system have a pivotal and effective role in achieving the humanitarian goals of the system by following up on cases and providing the necessary support to beneficiaries, therefore being honored by His Majesty the King, came in support of a society based on innovation, justice and humanity. Since 2018 until today, we have over 7,000 beneficiaries in the alternative sanctions. All of them are very successful and very stable, and this will lead us to more stable community in the future. Um, now I can say that uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain have the first implementation of alternative sanctions and open prison, and we have one of the lowest reoffending rates.
and this shows the successful implementation of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Minister of Interior. And of course, this will never happen without the direct supervision of the Minister of Interior and the successful goals and strategies that have been uh, putting together by the General Manager of uh, the General Directorate of Sentence Enforcement and Alternative Sanctions. The alternative sentencing program is a bold step towards building a more just and humane society as it seeks to rehabilitate offenders in society, which enhances the stability of society and gives the Kingdom of Bahrain a distinguished position in terms of human rights and achieving restorative justice. During a previous telephone call, a political analyst and diplomat specializing in Middle East, Adiv Powell, said that Bahrain's open prisons program contributes to preparing convicts to return to society and learn responsibility and positivity. The Bahrain Open Prisons Program is a, a rehabilitation program for long-term prisoners, um, that is those on, on, on serving, serving long sentences in, in jail. And it's a program under which they can be released into the community during the day to do um, a community service and learn skills um, through work that uh, uh, of benefit for them and the wider society, and and then they come back to stay in good quality accommodation, secure accommodation at, at night, and the idea is to prepare these prisoners who would other, otherwise spend many years in jail not doing very much, and prepare them to rejoin society, to learn skills, to learn responsibility, to learn a more positive attitude, so that. In the long term, this will reduce the crime rate and, and integrate people back into society and prepare them to live um, fully uh, positive lives within society. The political analyst and diplomat specialising in Middle Eastern, David Powell, also noted that the Open Prisons programme is an important step in contributing to the reintegration of inmates into society. The Open Prisons programme um, is part of a series of initiatives uh, within Bahrain to, um, to rehabilitate prisoners of all kinds back into society. And that's what's won the country international recognition because these are rare steps within the region. And uh, as well as this program, which is designed to teach people uh, commu positive community skills while keeping them within safe detention facilities during the night. Um, combined with the alternative sentencing programme, where prisons actually released early uh, to, to undertake more positive uh, action within society. This is something that, that's giving um, hope to detainees and hope to society, because it's a path to redemption for, for detainees who fall into crime or into terrorism, gives them a way out of prison uh, and a way of, of looking towards uh, living more productive lives and um, this combined with the amnesty for security prisoners as I said is is uh, creates an opportunity to look forward and, and set a standard for, re for, for justice across the region and even more widely. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the US ambassador to Bahrain at Stephen C. Bondi at Secure Palace his Royal Highness affirmed the long-standing Bahrain-US relations, which continue to be strengthened through bilateral agreements, such as the recently signed Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement, CSIPA. His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of advancing the strategic partnership and multi-sectorial collaboration between Bahrain and the US to meet mutual aspirations. His Royal Highness affirmed the prominent role of the US alongside allied countries in safeguarding security and stability, both in the region and globally. During the meeting at Ways to Enhance Bilateral Relations, issues of common interest and the latest regional and international developments were also discussed. Attending the meeting were the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Al Malki. The Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Follow-up Committee for the Implementation of the National Plan to Promote the Spirit of Belonging to the Nation and Reinforce the Values of Nationalism, Baranuna, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired the panel meeting in the presence of committee members, the Minister of Labour, the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf, 
the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, the Minister of Information and the Minister of Youth Affairs. The Minister highlighted the Royal Directives in His Majesty the King's Address at the opening of the third session of the sixth legislative term and conducting an integrated study to measure preparedness to promote Bahraini nationality, to balance between the openness and reviewing requirements and protection of the national security. He said the directives reflect royal views and approach to promoting Bahraini identity. He hailed the government's support led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for Bahrainuna's initiatives. General Sheikh Rashid announced the launch of a national conference to promote Bahraini identity that would be held in the first quarter of 2025. He said that the committee will conceive conducting and evaluating studies and research, noting that since the launch of the national plan, specific performance indicators have been identified to measure public opinion trends, which helped to know the impact of implementing national initiatives on the public. He revealed a project to study promoting national values in Bahraini society to form a prominent mechanism to encourage positive values and practices. He asserted that Bahraini's goals and principles are based on the values and goals of His Majesty the King's reform project. After that, the committee reviewed topics on the agenda, in which the Information Minister highlighted the Ministry's initiatives, including the public image strategy of Bahrain 2024-2026. The strategy includes a vision and charter, the economy of innovation and the future, and the land of pearls and civilization, and development in the Bahraini Camera Initiative for documentary films. Meanwhile, the Minister of Youth Affairs also reviewed the Ministry's initiatives related to the volunteering platform, strengthening the national identity, and conducted related studies. The President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities also reviewed cultural initiatives that strengthen national loyalty. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Education for Policies, Strategies and Performance also discussed initiatives, including the Popular Culture Curriculum and the National Service and National Identity Programme. The CEO of BTEA also presented the latest developments in the Ministry of Tourism's initiatives, including the launch of a photography competition and the project to introduce the history and landmarks of the Hawar Islands in coordination with the Ministry of Education. The Bahrainuna Executive Office also presented the latest developments in a campaign Together We Make the Future and the project's approval to digitise the Electronic Watana magazine. The Minister of Interior asserted the significance of reinforcing national responsibility and investing in reinforcing national identity. He highlighted the importance of youth's role and contributions to promoting their identity. He urged including the Bahraini identity in school curricula. He thanked the members for the dedication to coordinate on the development of Bahraini Unit initiatives and achieving goals. The General Assembly of the International School Sports Federation ISF held its meeting in Bahrain ahead of the beginning of the Gymnasiad on Thursday. The meeting was attended by the Minister of Education and Chairman of the Higher Organising Committee of the Gymnasiad, Dr Mohammed bin Mubarak Juma, in addition to regional and international participation. The General Assembly discussed the preparations for the start of the Gymnasiad in Bahrain. The Higher Organising Committee worked to provide all the necessary logistical needs to ensure the smooth organisation of the Gymnasiad according to the highest high standards. The participating delegations expressed their admiration and appreciation for the Kingdom's readiness to facilitate the performance of the teams. The Executive Committee for the ISF Bahrain Gymnasiad 2024 has launched the official event website ahead of the Games which will be held under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on October the 24th to the 31st. The website provides key information about the Games and the International School Sport Federation, as well as live updates on the competitions. The site has features like a family and friends package and the Observers Programme, which offers an insider look at the international youth sports events for prospective hosts, sports professionals, companies, international federations and event organisers. The programme provides valuable insights into the organisation of major sporting events. The site also features information on Bahrain's tourist attractions, allowing visitors to explore the Kingdom's unique culture during their stay.
The president of the Asian Football Confederation and first vice president of FIFA, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, met Kyrgyzstan President Azadia Jabrov on the sidelines of the opening ceremony of the Development Academy and National Teams Training Centre of the Kyrgyz Football Federation, which was held in Bishkek. Sheikh Salman delivered a speech uh, during the ceremony in which he praised the support that Kyrgyz football receives from Japarov, noting the growing development witnessed by the game in the country. Sheikh Salman congratulated the Kyrgyz Federation on the opening of the game academy and the National Teams Training Centre, stressing that these vital projects will have positive repercussions on the outcomes of football in the country by expanding the base of the game and nurturing talents in addition to raising the level of national teams and increasing the competitive capabilities in continental and international football events. Sheikh Salman stressed the Asian Federation's support for the progress of the Kyrgyz Football Association through various development programmes. The Kingdom of Bahrain, represented by the Information E-Government Authority, the IGA, hosted the 49th meeting of the Arab Institute for Training and Research and Statistics Board of Trustees and the 16th session of the UN Economic and Social Commission for Western Asian Statistical Committee, supported by the Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Information and Communication Technology, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. The events held from October the 21st to the 23rd attracted representatives from most Arab countries and over 50 senior officials and heads of statistical institutions to facilitate the exchange of expertise among Arab countries. IGA Chief Executive Mohammed Akhayed expressed pride in hosting these important meetings in the statistical industry in Bahrain, highlighting the government's commitment to supporting statistical work and enhancing regional cooperation to achieve economic and social objectives. Building capabilities and capacities in the statistical community in the Arab region is very important. Bahrain is hosting this important meeting where all um, statistics offices in Arab region, we discuss uh, important elements in how we uh, train our colleagues, how we build our capabilities, how we build our capacities in, um, in producing the best uh, quality of uh, statistics indicators, in addition to, um, uh, to have more timely and using uh, more innovative and advanced tools in publishing these data. This uh, meeting uh, aims especially uh, to identify uh, uh, a program uh, in the field of statistics to strengthen the capacity building in the national statistical uh, system and uh, uh, especially on fo focus on the uh, national statistical institutes uh, for example to improve their um, production to improve the quality of uh, statistic uh, production uh, uh, in uh, uh, social and demographic statistics uh, in economic statistics also and uh, and how 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 uh, govern rate are, how uh, how uh, um, uh, manage manage uh, all the issues in the uh, national statistical uh, system the main objective of this meeting is to look at the uh, harmonization and the discussion and the collaboration that took place in the last two years uh, for the uh, fulfilling many achievements uh, in the Arab region in the domain of statistics and for enhancing the uh, statistical system in the Arab region. The, the uh, interaction and the collaboration and the integration as well between the different uh, stakeholders, especially um, international and uh, uh, regional organization working in this field, as well as all the member states or all the Arab countries working in statistics. IGA Chief Executive Mohammed Ali al Khaid met with Saudi Arabia's General Authority for Statistics President Dr. Fahad bin Abdullah al Dossari. They examined key areas of cooperation, including a joint statistical projects and programs, progress in implementing agreements and memorandums of understanding for exchanging statistical software expertise and initiatives to train local talent to strengthen the statistical sector in both countries. The two parties underscored the need for comprehensive data to support ongoing development in both countries and meet current needs. IGA Chief Executive Mohammed al Khaid met with the Director General of the Statistical, Economic and Social Research and Training Centre for Islamic Countries, Sarah Sumut, 
to discuss cooperation and mutual interest in statistics sector. Al-Qaeda emphasised statistical capacity building and knowledge exchange and highlighted Bahrain's track record and the IGA's efforts to develop the skills of statistics professionals, expressing interest in sharing successful experiences and benefiting from the centre's initiatives with member states. He underscored the importance of technical support in developing essential systems and tools, noting that these efforts enhance data exchange and effective management for all stakeholders. Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, BTEA, hosted the Connections Luxury Bahrain event on October the 20th to the 23rd. The event aimed to enhance tourism collaboration between Bahrain and the UK, in line with the authority's strategy to increase the number of tourists from key markets, including the British market. CEO of BTEA, Saura Bahiji, emphasised the importance of collaboration between the two countries in promoting tourism. She highlighted Bahrain's diverse attractions, which range from a rich cultural heritage and authentic Arab hospitality, positioning the kingdom as a unique destination for British and European travellers. The CEO said that the event is part of BTEA's ongoing efforts to strengthen relationships with the tourism sector in the UK as part of the kingdom's tourism strategy 2022 to 2026. This strategy aims to increase the number of visitors by delivering specialised tourist packages tailored to the interests of visitors from various targeted markets. The chairman of the Sunni Waqf Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid Al Hajri, opened the Kunji Mosque located in Deir al Maharik, in line with Bahrain's urban expansion plan and infrastructure development, and providing a suitable environment for citizens and residents. Al Hadri stressed that the mosque construction projects reflect Bahrain's keenness to ensure the availability of places for practicing worship with ease and convenience, as mosques in Islam have a special status and a high position among all people, which contributes to strengthening values and belonging in society. The mosque consists of a main prayer hall for men and a prayer hall for women and a hall for events, and it can accommodate more than 600 worshippers and housing for the imam and museum.